Hello friends, this video on morphology of flowering plants part 27 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us look at the flower types based on number of floral appendages. That means how many floral parts do they have. So based on that again we will talk about flower types. Now again they can be of the following types, trimerous, tetramerous, pentamerous. So these are the three types of flowers based on how many floral appendages do they have. Now when I say floral appendages, I am basically talking about the floral part. So let us talk about each of them starting with trimerous. Not nothing much to explain, tri means three. So they have floral appendages in multiples of three. For example, lily. So when I say floral appendage, I am talking about the floral parts, maybe the petals. So here how many petals do you have? One, two, three, four, five, six, which is a multiple of three. So this is a trimerous flower. Quite simple, right? Now, trimerous fl flowers can have three appendages. They can have six appendages. Again, they can have nine appendages. Right? So, anything in multiples of three. Next one is tetramerous. Again, the word tetra means four. So, floral appendages in multiples of four. Example would be jasmine. So, something of this sort. Maybe four petals or eight petals or sixteen petals. So, they all will be tetramerous. So, jasmine is one example of tetramerous flowers. Third one is pentamerous. Penta again means five. So, floral appendages in multiples of five. Example would be hibiscus, periwinkle. So, this is how hibiscus looks like. One, two, three, four, five. So, you have five petals. Similarly, in periwinkle again, you have five petals. One, two, three, four and five. So it, it is not, it, it does not need to be necessarily 5, it could be multiples of 5 as well, like 10, 15, 20, 25 or something like that, right? So these are the three types of flowers based on the number of floral appendages, whether they have floral appendages in multiples of 3, 4 or 5, respectively, they are named as trimerous, tetramerous or pentamerous. Now let us look at the last topic on flower types which is based on the position of walls. So we have spoken about the four walls, calyx, corolla, androsium and gynosium. Now based on which wall is located where with respect to the other walls, again flowers can be divided into the following types. Hypogynous, perigynous and epigynous. So these are the three types of flowers based on the position of the various walls with respect to each other. So let us start with the hypogynous. Hypo means less, right? Hyper and hypo are the two terms. Hyper means more, hypo means less. Gynous is something related to the gynosium. Right? So this means that gynosium occupies the highest position. So hypo means less. That means everything else is less than gynosium. Hypogynous. So less gynosium. So everything, all other walls are less than gynosium. So gynosium will occupy the highest position. So right now I am talking about position in the sense highest level. So this will look somewhat like this. So this is the gynosium, right? This part is the gynosium. So if you see here, the sepals or the calyx is below. If you talk about the petals, they also originate from here. So they are also below. These are the androsium and this is the gynosium. So the gynosium occupies the highest position. So this kind of flower is said to have a superior ovary. Superior means something which is above. So ovary is superior with respect to all other walls. So example of a hypogynous flower would be a china rose. That is why in china rose it is 
at least when compared to the other types of flowers in China Rose, you can actually see the ovary if you actually look inside. So this is known as hypogynous. The second type is epigynous. Epigynous means gynosium occupies the lowest position. That is all other walls will be higher when compared to gynosium. This will look somewhat like this. So if you see here, the ovary is at the bottom. So even the sepals lie above the ovary. This, these are the sepals, right? So even the sepals are above ovary, the petals are above ovary, the stamens are also above ovary. So only the gynosium part or the carpal or the ovary that lies at the bottom. So this is an inferior ovary. So this is an inferior ovary. Right? So you can understand the difference between the two hypogynous and epigynous. So examples of plants which have epigynous uh, with flowers are is guava. And the third type is perigynous. So in perigynous, gynosium occupies the central position. So it is neither superior, the ovary is neither superior nor inferior. So there can be two types of arrangement. For example, here if you see, the ovary is not below the thallus, right? So it is not at the bottom and it is neither at the top. So it is half inferior ovary. It is not completely inferior, but at the same time it is not superior also. So it is named as half inferior ovary. So example of such a plant is rose. So both of these arrangement represents perigynous. So now you understand when I say position means the level, whether the ovary is below all other walls or the ovary is above all other walls or if the ovary is at the central position, neither at the top nor at the bottom. So these are the three types of flowers, hypogynous, epigynous and perigynous. Right? Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.